Guess what we're doing? Ordering too much food. <laughs> we are moving aboard today. We have just left Del Rey. We stopped, just picked up a pizza from one of our favorite restaurants in West Palm. And we are sleeping on Sea Wind tonight. We are so excited. You have anything to say? I have a bellyache. Yeah, Katie has a little bit of a bellyache. I think she's a little, uh, she's been working so much that she's been so much in her head that she needs to get out of her head, back into her body. Yeah, so we're gonna go look for a bookstore. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's it. So we will see you guys when we are in Indian Town later. Yes. Happy birthday! <laughs> Whose birthday is it? Sea Winds. You think it is her birthday? Uh, yeah. Where are we at? Our home. We're at our home. We should put the screens in um, the right. Okay. We have to protect ourselves from mosquitoes. The mosquitoes here will like eat your leg off if you let them. <laughs> so first thing is first. All right, so we have the 13.6, so they are in float. We have to turn on the fridge. We gotta get this thing cooling. So here we are, 13.6. So when this is in, the fan doesn't run because our unit works with no fan when we're in the water, it's a keel cooled. But when we're out of the water, we pull this switch and now the, the fan will come on for the cooling of the refrigerator. All right, so here we go, fan is on. Here we go. 75.3 in there right now. So we are fired up. So this thing will start getting cold. It's, I already feel it getting cold. I hear the fan came on. We got our fridge running. High five. All right. <laughs> so we got a little bit of groceries. We only bought a few things to uh, just hold us over for the next couple of days. Tomorrow, I'm gonna really get into some boat projects. Katie's gonna do some things. She has a list of her own. And tonight, we will just rest. We aren't getting into any boat projects. It's like, yeah, we're putting our stuff away. It's, what is it like? Is it three o'clock, four o'clock? It's 4.15. 4 4.15, so it took us forever to get here today, but we weren't rushing at all, so. Okay, that is all. We will check in later. That's something about these Indian town showers. It, like, I just feel at home again. Don't you? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just showering at the marina. Yeah, showering at the marina. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Yay! Hey. What did you just do? Are you hiccup? I have a stuck hiccup. A stuck, yeah, Katie has the hiccups. <gasps> oh, poor girl. Um, what was your question? <laughs> Where did you just go with that headlamp on? To pee outside. <laughs> oh, not out the, outside on the ground. You literally peed off the boat just now. Yeah, which means I peed on the boat. Yeah, you, <laughs> you definitely peed on the boat. Because the pee stream goes towards the boat. Uh huh. But I can't hang off too far or else I'll fall off the boat. Right. I know. Well, I'm glad you didn't fall off the boat. Thank you. And I'm also glad that you successfully peed. Thank you. I guess we can call it christening. Right? Yeah, she's used to it. <laughs> oh, jeez. What, Seawinds? Yeah. I peed on her a lot. Yeah, you have. We are just getting ready for bed. You can see it's actually clean in here. Most of our camera equipment is put away. We have the V-Birth all ready. We're gonna watch a TV show or something like that. Yeah. Got the screens in. Don't have any mosquitoes in here. It is a 
beautifully cool night. Do you think it's in the upper 60s right now? Yeah. Or is it like 70? Oh, 70. Yeah. Excuse me. I have wet hands. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, there's dripping. <laughs> Just so, let's see. Oh, there's a little bit of dripping. So, this is us. We are home. Like we never left. Back on our yeah. boat, So, yeah, we will see you guys in the morning. Come here, say goodbye. First night aboard. Love you. Love you. <laughs> Aww. She warms up. She's just a little shy right now. Oh boy. A little shy. Oh no. First time pointing the camera in your face in a little while. Oh boy. Alright, good night. It is 66 degrees, and we just woke up. It's 7.22. Well, we have a lot to do today. I'm gonna make some coffee. First, I have to turn the propane on, see if all that works. The wash. We gotta wash the French press. In the pot. And then we have to make some coffee. Katie, I think you're gonna do some yoga. Uh, no, I just went up. I take the yoga block to my neck this morning because I also have many projects. Mm -hmm. It looks like my head's coming out of my armpit. Yes. It's called a pit head. Just leave it on there. Come on, baby. It has to purge a bunch of air. I know. Oh, yeah. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Good morning. First coffee aboard. The propane worked. Cheers to you, my dear. Cheers. It's gonna be hot, it's gonna be hot. Mm hmm. Hot. Ooh, but good. I missed that. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna get into projects. I'm, I'm getting out some, some stuff. Yoga. You're gonna do some yoga? Yeah. Well, tomorrow is our splash day. We got a ton done this weekend. It's Monday, Tuesday at 11 a.m. is the appointment. And I have... <laughs> All right, sorry, the GoPro died there. Apparently it's still sleepy. Um, anyway, so yeah, tomorrow is our splash day and I have a list of things that needs to get done short, but there are a few things that I need to do before we go into the water namely things that are below the water line when we're in the water. So I'm going to try and finish the exhaust today, so hopefully that goes well. But my, my more pressing project is I want to service the rest of our seacocks. Since I lapped and greased the forward one, I decided that it would be a good idea, since it hasn't been done for a few years, to clean and grease. I don't have to lap them because they're working properly, but clean the old grease off and re-grease the other three seacocks in the boat. So that's what I'm gonna do. So here we go. All right, <clears throat> so I got a piece of this hose and looks like it should make the bend. A Little bit of Dawn dish soap always helps 
push these things on. So this looks like it's going to work. Um, this is within the bend radius rated for this uh, Vetus slang hose. I, I bought this hose specifically because it could take a tight turn like this. The next thing to do is to take this off of here and seal these threads up and then put this on permanently. Hi little one. Got a little bit of explaining to you guys to do. Disclaimer, for the next seven minutes, I will be getting very nerdy with explaining the biggest safety consideration when designing a new exhaust system for a boat. This may or may not be of interest to you, and although I hope you watch it, I won't judge if you skip ahead to the 18 minute mark. So, the other part of this exhaust system is the cooling water injection. So I think as I said before, maybe if I didn't, here we are. Um, the reason we can use rubber hose in the marine exhaust that we have, and this is generally the case on all boats, um, is because the cooling water for the engine is mixed with the hot exhaust gases. And if you guys remember, I'll show you this. This is a threaded hole here. And This goes down in there, this little uh, stainless nipple, and it actually is the supply of the cooling water. This is our cooling water supply that was in the old exhaust, and it came up to that cylinder up here. Well, <clears throat> same thing's gonna happen. The cooling water is gonna come out that same hose and it's gonna go into this injection elbow. But the reason they had that dry, hot riser that came up, it came from the manifold up here to that stainless steel cylinder up here. The reason that they had that is because if you think in relation to the water line, when the boat is in the water, the entire engine is underwater. It's kind of weird to think about it like that, but it is in fact under the water. If your injection point is also under the water, then when you shut the engine off, there is the possibility of a siphon happening. You have all this pressure because the, the boat hull is displacing water, so the water is also trying to push back in so, to the hull. And so you have this pressure on the, on the sides of the hull that happens and that, that is buoyancy, that is why the boat floats. So you have an engine that is underwater and you also have a cooling water injection point that is underwater. A siphon could start after shutting the engine off. There's no valve that shuts off when the engine shuts off. The, the seacock remains open to the raw water strainer. The exhaust is open, so you have a completely open system. So because of that water pressure, because there was already a flow of water, a solid column of water, the, the water will continue to flow to the inside of the boat because of that pressure difference and because the engine is under the water. Now, what can happen is that white muffler, since it is also under the water line, the water, the water would continue to flow into here and fill the cylinder up. Now, under normal operating conditions, the exhaust pressure coming out of here, the exhaust blows through here, mixes with water, cools the exhaust gases down enough, goes into here, and then the exhaust pressure also pushes columns of water up and out the exhaust. Well, when the engine's off, there is no pressure to push it up this, up this hill and then out. So once this cylinder fills up, if a siphon starts happening, then it's gonna fill up to the top and then it's gonna start going 
back up this hose and then it's going to keep filling up and you'll actually have water go into your engine and through the exhaust manifold it'll get down into the cylinders and so you'll go to start the engine and it won't start because the, the engine will be seized up. So after explaining all that there's a way to get around it and this is the answer. This is an anti-siphon loop. Now there's a little check valve in here and what this does is this lets air into the system when the engine shuts off. And so if I turn the camera here, this is going to be mounted somewhere right up here. This has to be above the water line. Even when you're heeled over, it needs to be above the water line. So this is a very high point in the uh, cockpit locker here. This is the supply from the engine, the pressurized cooling water from the impeller, from the raw water pump. This is going to get put into here, and then I have a piece of hose that is going to go back down and go into the injection elbow. Now when the engine is pressurized, when the engine is running, this seals. This is a one-way valve, and no water will come out of here. It'll let water pass through and go into the exhaust. When the engine shuts off, this valve opens and it breaks any siphon. And because it's above the water line and because air gets let in the system, this will stay full of water, but this part will drain out and into the exhaust, and then you won't have a siphon that um, fills your engine up. So that is the long and short of it. Um, I hope I explained that well. So this is the hose that they supply with the, uh, the injection elbow from Buke. Um, this fitting is a British pipe thread. It's a flared fitting. I can't match this up. I can't find anything in, in any stores. And I don't really feel like trying to order an adapter or anything like that. What I want to do is use this end here. And I have this, this is half inch vinyl tubing. And it just so happens that this fits very, very well over this stainless steel tubing here. So I'm going to abandon the hose part of this and I'm going to actually cut this, this compression fitting that has been pressed on here. I'm going to cut this off and pry it open and I'm going to get this tube out of here. And then I'm going to use this stainless steel tube. I'm going to push this hose onto here and use a hose clamp. And that's going to be how I, you know, adapt the raw water uh, cooling loop through the anti-siphon valve to the injection elbow. Now this is not exhaust hose. This is just temporary so I can get a length. This is cheaper hose that I have a lot of and this is going to be like I said just temporary and I will get some proper half inch uh, wet exhaust hose later. This is just to get us into the water and to test the exhaust system out. That's what I was hoping for. So you can see, looks like that did compress down onto this tubing a little bit, but that's okay. A hose clamp will seal right over that and actually it acts as a little bit of a barb. So that's good. All right, so I ditched that hose. Here's my stainless steel nipple and this is how it attaches to the uh, injection elbow. What this is does, this is, a, this is a flared fitting and this just tightens down into the threads and then it compresses around the stainless steel tubing to make a watertight fit. And I'll be able to push the, this hose onto there, just like that, and then a hose clamp around there and that's how my injection will be. I was very careful to not nick this when, when I was uh, sawing that fitting off of there. I, I didn't want to ruin this thing or put a score in it that might let water pass through. So I, I'm really happy that this turned out like this. All right, put a little bit of Tef gel on this stuff. 
because this is iron, this is stainless steel, and this is brass or bronze, whatever the material is. There we go. Uh, this is just some duct tape marking where this nut was so I know how far this was threaded into the uh, injection elbow. Um, this is the flange that bolts onto the exhaust manifold. And I have some um, Teflon tape. It's uh, mega tape. It's used for you know plumbing fittings, but I looked up the specs on this, and this is good up to 500 degrees Fahrenheit, which if we see 500 degrees Fahrenheit in uh, the engine, we have a lot bigger of an issue than this tape. So this is gonna be my thread sealant to thre uh, seal against the exhaust gases. That tape is also rated for very high pressure as well. So this is what we're gonna use. All right, while we're in here and this exhaust is apart, I'm gonna check the engine sacrificial anode, the zinc. Okay, looks like it's time to replace that thing. It is gonzo. All right, new zinc. I did not use any TEF gel this time. For those of you who are watching that questioned the TEF gel and insulating the zinc from the iron engine block, which is the exact opposite of what you want to be doing, I did not use any TEF gel on this. I want as much of an electroconnectivity between this and the engine block. So, this is going back in. Video call on Starlink. Okay, got this sealed on with the Teflon tape, so that should be good. Couldn't put this one in because too close to the hall. Cool. First, first huge part is in, and it's great. And this should be plenty of wiggle room for any of the vibration of the engine. Okay, so I added a little bit of shape protection. It does rest against the fiberglass right here. And uh, so that should be good. There's a quarter inch of rubber there. It doesn't touch anything up here. And this doesn't touch anything here. I think I will add some shape protection though right here. All right, so we have the outlet coming up and then down. This is the valve. 
and then it's a straight shot. I eliminated the muffler because this is the new muffler. I spent so much time with that other Sentec muffler that I put over here, if you guys remember. And it's going right out the exhaust uh, port in the transom. Whew, so I think it's time to take a break and eat something and drink like a gallon of water. <laughs> I'm gonna clean this. This is an inch and a half, I believe, see caca. <laughs> There's some uh, cobwebs in there. Yeah, and so, now we're gonna clean this thing off and put some new grease on it. So here's the seacock, it's back in. This is the lock nut as you can see here. And then this inner nut here is what actually applies the pressure and pulls the cone in and seals water out. But to tighten this and to get it right, you have to have a thin wrench and then a regular crescent wrench on the lock nut. Otherwise they won't fit in there. So get this not right. And you hold this from spinning and you tighten up the outside nut and that way it locks the nut in place but you can still move the seacock and i like how that feels so i'm going to leave it just like that cool i'm going to do the other side Two Seahawks done. A lot of sweat equity in this day. <laughs> okay, one of the finishing touches. 
I just took the hoses off the anti-siphon valve and you gotta cut it shorter. This one's a three quarter and this one's half inch, so I had to cut that half inch off of there. They don't want any restriction going in. So that's that. I'm gonna put them back on. Oh man, all right. We have done it, everybody, we have done it. I'm in the starboard, or the port side locker right now. There's our water lift muffler. You want me to go down there? Yeah. I don't want to get fiberglass here. No, you don't. There, there's no fiberglass. Katie is uh, inspecting my work. Okay. Look at that. Amazing. Mm-hmm. That's so good, honey. Thank you. So good. Thank you. Amazing job. Thanks, honey. All right, back to work. Go get a tiger. Oh man, that was a day. We did it, Eve. So we splash tomorrow. Our appointment is at 11 a.m. I think I might have mentioned that today to the camera. I got everything I needed to get done. Katie had her first full day of work on Starlink. Tell them how it went. It went really good. So far, so good. We'll see what it's like after like a full week of meetings. Mm -hmm. So, that's a big deal. We're gonna get put into the water tomorrow. I got a couple things to do in the morning. I didn't get to grease the one last seacock, but we uh, had to stop because you have to stop when the mosquitoes come out here. And so we went and showered and ate, and now uh, we're gonna watch some TV and get some sleep because we are both tired. Yeah. So, proud of this one here. Proud of this one here. <laughs> All right, we'll see you in the morning. How was it? Yeah. First pee in the pee thing. Okay, I need to do some yoga, and you need to get out of here. Love you. So I can work. Okay.